words come from? For you to say, I don't know, it's not the answer. It just shows you're taking an agnostic position, that's all. If, if, um, if uh, I wrote down a piece of paper, um, there's a banana in that bag, and I gave that to you. Yeah. Would you believe that? If I saw there is a banana in that, then I'll no, believe No, I'm saying you didn't give it as well. I said, I'm going to write down this banana. Yeah. I'm going to give that to you. That's my bag. Yeah. In the analogy of the bag? So now believe in, believe in, in the analogy of the bag? Can I answer? Can I answer? Can I answer with the way I want? You need your patience. So you need your patience. I know you want me to answer in a certain way. I'm sorry if I don't fulfill that need of yours or that requirement. No, no, it's not simple as that. No, it's not a simple yes or no. It is not. If you just give me on a piece of paper that there is a banana in the bag, I will say probably. I wouldn't say no. I wouldn't say yes. Yes? I said this, yeah, I would say probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but you see the universe, look, the, the difference between the analogy of the bag and the universe is that we know that the universe... I said probably, look, I've already given you my answer. If, if, I said that, if I said the universe exists and you know that the universe exists, you can't deny that, okay? But you and I know that the universe cannot come from nothing. Do you agree? So what is the alternative? Okay, that's fine. What is the alternative? <coughs> give me a give, give me a rush. No, no, you can't say no one. Don't speak for everyone. You, you cannot speak for everyone. You cannot speak for everyone. I'm sorry. Okay, so you're taking an agnostic position once again. No one now. Now, yeah. when it why, why do people not know of this creation? Why? Why do they not know where the universe came from? <laughs> Actually, that answer which you just said, yeah. So there's a faith-based answer. I believe God created the universe. Yeah. But scientifically, we don't know because the physic, physics hasn't advanced enough. And it's not no. Even with an advanced physics, even with science, they wouldn't know. You know why? Do you know why? Because without time and space, science cannot operate. Well, they say before, there's a theory that before the, before the project, before the Big Bang, there was no time. No, that's. There's another theory that says. Yeah, yeah, but that, but that, that, that depends. That depends on the. No, I don't think so because if there is no time before the universe and there is no space before the universe, then for the scientists, they cannot formulate models without these two components, which are key to every science model. Which, yeah, you need to have. Yeah, they all need time and space. Can it be without space? Exactly. You need you need either one of them to operate. Otherwise, science breaks down. The fact that the fact that Stephen Hawkins could only go up to the singularity, you know, not beyond that, yeah, because he realized himself that without one of these components, time or space, you cannot operate. Even then, even then you'll need space, my friend. No, no, no. Every model, that's what I'm telling you, I don't think you, you, you got this. Every model that they develop, you need one of these components, time or space. You can't operate without that. Science is handicapped without that. Yeah, but you're forgetting space now. Exactly. So go and look it up because this is what I'm telling you. It's not just it's not just time. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's not a theory. It's a hypothesis. You know what? You know why it's a hypothesis, not a theory yet? Because it's been rejected by majority of the scientists. Anyone? And they have these different ideas that it could be eternal, it could be cyclic, it could be all this. But these are hypotheses. It means they are just. Bunch of opinions out there. That's just a bunch of opinions. Okay, you know what you're saying basically? You're saying that in order for. No, no, no. No, but science, science has limits. 
you have to, and they, they accept that. Science does have limits. For example, if if I took, brother, just one minute, let me finish the point. It's, it's like me giving you a tool, like a metal detector, to go and find plastic. Would you ever? Yeah, to find plastic. Exactly, so it's a wrong tool. It's a wrong tool to understand the metaphysical. Naturalistic science only deals with the physical, and in order, in order to observe and understand the physical world, it needs these two components, time and space. Without that, doesn't matter how how advanced your science is. Yeah, it doesn't matter how advanced your science is. Without time and space, they cannot operate. These are the fundamental components for them to postulate any theory or even a hypothesis. Yes, they have to do this. No, because it's, we are talking about naturalistic science. My friend, we are talking about naturalistic science. What is naturalistic science? It has to be either observable, it has to be measurable, it has to be testable, it has to be uh, conduct experiments, and there's no way you can think of any of this without time and time or space. Any time. No, no, any time, my friend. Any time. Okay, you think of you think of performing an experiment without space or time on any on any of these hypotheses. You can't. Even in quantum level. No, no, it exists in a quantum vacuum. That is not nothing. Okay, that's not nothing. Go and look it up. That quantum vacuum is not nothing. So even at a quantum level, you need these components. That's why I said it's handicapped without this, my friend. Doesn't matter how you look at it. So at the end of the day, we cannot say that the universe came from nothing. Okay? And for you to say, I don't know, again, you're taking an agnostic position. So the question is, what is the alternative? I would say that it's, it, if you break it down to its simplest form, it's either from something or it cannot be nothing. So the only thing is it has to come from something. And in order for this something, it has to be, first and foremost, not dependent, because everything else you see around you, including the universe, is contingent. So it has to be independent. That, that entity has to be independent, which brought about the universe and everything else. Okay, give me an alternative then, go on. Because your answer is nothing, that's not really an answer. With what? Have many theories. I mean, I said some one people will say time may not have been around. I mean, what did I tell you about hypothesis, my friend? You're not giving me theories. You're giving me hypothesis. Hypotheses are claims and opinions of scientists. There's nothing wrong in look. There's nothing wrong in having opinions. But in, until that opinion becomes peer-reviewed and proven, sorry, disproven, then only it becomes a theory. So when when you say something. They have to disprove it. Until so, if it's if it's not disproven, then it re, it becomes a theory. Why, why but as soon as it, yeah, exactly. So these are opinions, my friend. You can have a million opinions. It doesn't mean it's fact. Yeah. Why are you insisting that be proofs for that? But do you, have, do you insist they have proofs for what you think? Say again. You're insisting that there should be proofs for hypotheses. That's how science works, my friend. Do you know how science works? In order, in order for a hypothesis to become a theory, it needs to go through peer review. Do you have the same? Do you require that of your religion? Religion is not science. So why, why would, it, why would you? No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Why would it go through the same process as science? You don't have proof, you don't know. Yeah, inference. That is the reason. <laughs> Where did he come from? <laughs> yeah. Did he say Boris is Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Wait, look at the invisible. Religion are based on logic. They're based on your rationality. They're not based on like scientific evidence. No no religion. Religion. We we use first and foremost for us the revelation is important. But then we also use, we, for us there's nothing wrong in using science in our understanding of the world. Because it explains the naturalistic world, there's nothing wrong in that. However, sometimes you can use inference to understand, like, like I was asking you, where did the universe come from? Okay, it couldn't have come from nothing, 
So what is the alternative? You didn't have an alternative. You said, I don't know. But I don't know is not really an answer. Literally the only answer. That's not an answer, no, my friend. Nobody knows. No, no you, can't, you can't speak for everyone. I'm sorry. Nobody knows. So first and foremost, the universe is here. Everything that begins to exist has a cause. You don't know. You don't, don't speak for yourself. You don't speak on my behalf. Just like I don't speak on your behalf. Very simple as that. So if, it, if, if you are going to say that the universe came from where? You have no answer. The reason you don't have an answer is because you're not willing to look at the option that God could be an option, but you're, you just, you said that is not really an option. By the way, why can't God be an option? Why can't God be an option? Oh, so it can be an option. Oh, you see, that's progress. Earlier he was atheist, now he's an agnostic. <laughs> By the way, you just became an agnostic. No, I've always been an agnostic. Okay, so you're not, so you're not an atheist then? That's what, that's what that means. Okay, so if there is a possibility that God could have brought about this universe, what, what, what objection do you have against that? By the way, I think there's only one God. Every single religious book is made up of five people. How many religious books have you read? Well, and then and then and then you call that wait a minute you call that logic? So which book have you read, brother? Is it, is it the Bible? Which Bible? Bible. You read the Bible, well, and you and you and you made a judgment. Wait, wait. Let me get this right. You read only a bit of the Bible. All books are written by people. Hold on. You you read only a bit of the Bible, and you condemned all the religious books in the world. How logical is that? Of course, they're written by people, but they reveal. But one of them is revealed by God. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's why we have to examine the different books. Because obviously the different books of religion, they all claim that they are from God. So for us, it is, it is now uh, imperative that we observe these claims. And then you, then you eliminate yeah, uh, the ones that you know have contradictions, for example. And that is one of the best ways to eliminate something. And that's why I said the atheist understanding of the worldview is always going to be contradictory because it's based on your whims and desires. Well, it is contradictory. Was that? When you want to it is contradictory, yeah, you're right. When you want to study cosmology, yeah. you study things like redshift, uh, Doppler effect. You don't study religious Do you agree with me? Yeah. So, so it's science, to, right? Okay, so when you're discussing science, yeah. you discuss scientific models, scientific methods, scientific principles. You don't discuss religious So you put those aside. No, you don't. No. You, you, you don't. Okay. How do you understand okay. I'm not talking about cosmology per se. There are certain. The no, no. There are there are certain principles, even in science, which they use uh, in logic, in philosophy, and in science. Okay. Take the example of cause and effect. No, no, no. You're talking about the origin of the universe. No, I'm talking about. This is a cosmological issue. No, no. Cause and effect. It's not a philosophical issue. It's not a religion. No, no, no. It can be used philosophically as well. Many philosophical, many philosophers did ponder about cosmology, did ponder about the universe, how it came. And that's the reason I brought in cause and effect. Cause and effect can be used in science and in philosophy too. Okay, and in religion too. There's nothing wrong in that. If you, if you, if everything, if anything that begins to exist, then it must have a cause. You know why? Because that shows that thing which began to exist is something which is dependent, is contingent. So we know that everything around us, including ourselves, are contingent. Okay, but then we need to explain what brought about these contingent things. What are they contingent on? And that's where the cause and effect comes. So, like I said, if everything that begins to exist has a cause, the universe began to exist, so it must have a cause. So now we have to speak about the cause. What is the cause? It's not nothing. There's a clue. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't exist and nothing are the same thing. Right? What's that? Say again? It doesn't exist and nothing are the same thing. It doesn't exist? No. I'm saying it doesn't exist. The, it doesn't exist and nothing are the same thing. Yeah, what's the point you're making? But you're saying there can't be any nothing. No, I'm saying if the universe, the universe, the we know... The universe always exists. No, it didn't always exist. Where's the evidence for that? But you're the one who made the claim, so you must have something to substantiate it. I didn't make that claim, you did. <laughs> the one who makes the claim, the onus is on them. What I'm saying to provide is, evidence. If there's no, if there's no such thing as nothing, 
Yeah. Then nothing has to be. Then something doesn't have to be. No, I think I think you're putting the cart before the horse. I'll tell you why. We know that the universe exists, right? So it's not nothing. The universe does exist. We also know that it began to exist because the scientists tell us it is. It began to exist. Can you can you so let me before, finish, please? It was it was nothing. Yeah, that's why I'm saying it began to exist, and we know we know that it exists. So you cannot ignore it. And they, they say that it is 13.8 billion years, which means that it had a beginning. What was before? Before the universe. Yeah. God. This is, this is God. Yeah. Where is he? Sorry? Where is he? Where is? Where was God? Where was God? God was where is he? He doesn't need a time and space. <laughs> what happened? Has God your tongue? What was he doing? What was he doing? That's none of your business. <laughs> okay, first and foremost. You don't know. Well, what do you mean I don't know? Yeah, I, I never said I knew everything about God. When did I make that claim? In fact, you made the claim that the universe is eternal. That's why I asked you, where is the evidence? Because the one who makes the claim, the onus is on them no, to provide I'm the evidence. Is, and I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not a physicist, so I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, if, if there's no such thing as nothing, and therefore nothing, then you don't have to create it. So therefore, the universe, or whatever it was before it was the universe, must have always existed. No, because you already said there's no such thing as nothing. You already said there's no such thing as nothing, and I agree with you. So before the universe existed, no, no, before the universe existed, it was nothing. That means it didn't exist. That's all it means. The universe did not exist. It began to exist at a certain point. I think you confuse yourself. No, you're contradictory. Okay, say, say again. You're saying, what, is that, what is that I'm saying? saying before the universe, Guys, sorry, I can't hear, please, if you don't mind. Yeah. Say again, yeah. You're, you're saying before the universe, that, that, was, that was created from nothing. Did I say it was created from nothing? Don't put words in my mouth. I never said that. I said the universe began to exit, exist at a certain point, which means before that, there was no universe. It began to exist, so what does that mean? That means before that point, there was, was look, if you ask me a question, allow me to finish at least. Allow me to finish, finish the answer. Before the universe, I have always answered the question, if you noticed. Before the universe existed, okay, saying that it didn't exist means the universe began to exist at a certain point. Before that, there was no universe. Which part of that you didn't understand? So what was it before it was the universe? You said it the didn't universe exist. How many times I repeat? I think people have understood. Maybe you didn't. But no, no you didn't. Say again? You're saying, that you're saying before the singularity there was nothing. I didn't say nothing. I said God, remember? Okay. <laughs> you can, if you want to go to faith-based answers, we can't, we can't have a discussion. No, no, but I will... You know, my answers are... Wait, that I... No, no, no. My, my answer... My answer will depend on my worldview. Okay? So when I whether scientists it's ask me, answer, can right? I finish? It's not peer reviewed, yeah, can I finish? Okay. So my answer will depend on my worldview. Your answer will depend on your worldview. Okay, I'm not going to divide my answer. If I if a scientist asks me a question, or a religious person asks me a question, or an atheist asks me a question, and that is wait, that is where the standard is in my in my worldview that my answer is going to remain consistent. You see what I mean? Just because a scientist asks me doesn't mean I'm not going to use the term God. Just because he or she doesn't like it. So there's a faith-based answer, which is God. You agree with that? I agree with that. I think God did it. Right? No, no, that's your worldview. My worldview is the way I answer. I'm not going to negate God from the equation, am I? Yeah, go on. There's a faith-based answer, which is, uh, which is to say that before the universe, God created it. Right? That's what you agree? No, no, no. Speak for yourself. Me? Okay, I think okay. God created it. Okay, good. So what do you mean by faith-based answer? Based on scripture, based on revelation, based on what I'm told by my, my book, which is the Quran, which I believe. No, my, it doesn't need to even be based on religious scriptures. It is based purely on inference. Okay, because to me, look, whether you, whether you call it God, whether you call it um, an, whether you call it an intelligent designer, whether you call it a supernatural being, supernatural power, supernatural energy, whatever it is, I'm saying that there has to be a being which brought all this into existence because we know the alternative is nothing and nothing doesn't even exist it cannot bring about something like the universe what was, what see what i mean it's based on inference here so you can name it look you can, you can call it a label like god if you want to that's fine okay but for me what i'm saying what i'm saying using this uh, this is called the kalam cosmological argument i think you've probably heard about it that everything that begins to exist 
which is like the universe, which began to exist. It must have a cause. And the cause, then we can define, after that we can define what the cause is. What Say again? It cannot be. It cannot be. The reason the scientists have... But, but I'm telling you why not. You ask me a question, I'm telling you why Why majority of the scientists have rejected that model of an infinite universe. Yeah, it's a hypothesis. Yeah, it's the least accepted among the scientists. The reason majority accept the Big Bang model over these other so-called uh, hypothesis out there is because these scientists also, using their own uh, intellect, they have come to the understanding that universe could not have been infinite because based on the redshift and based on the expansion of the universe, they realized at one point there was this singularity. Yes? And they say that it has to have a beginning. It cannot be beginningless. That still has beginnings. Even with the multi even with the multi universe, by the way, that is also a hypothesis. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Even with the multi universe hypothesis, not a not a theory because no one has seen beyond our universe. So these are all just like I said, all opinions. And opinions are neither they can they can be millions of opinions. Doesn't make it doesn't make they even they have they haven't even reached to the to the level of a theory, let alone a fact. What? Matter. Yeah, what do you think it is? Don't you see matter everywhere? Matter and energy. Atoms, molecules, energy. Okay, now that's another question. You asked me what is the universe made of, now you're asking what was it before. Before it didn't exist. I've repeated this several times, I don't know why you don't understand. No, it didn't. Matter, didn't ex matter is not, in not eternal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we because if you look in the universe, we see matter and energy. So where did it come from? God. <laughs> I'm not going to be like this gentleman here that give a theological answer and a scientific answer. No, my answer is consistent, my friend. There are some physicists. Yeah. Like Sean Carroll, he's saying that there was rhythmic crunches and big bang. Yeah, it's a hypothesis. And, that's, and that could have gone on. Infinite. That's a hypothesis, my friend. It's an opinion. It's also mathematical. He says we can do... We Doesn't can matter. Do you know, mathematically... So, so my point is, science is suspending judgment. No, no, they are not suspending judgment. There's a majority view and there's a minority view, even in science. You know why Why this model that you talk about? The big crunch? Yeah. You know, you know the reason the reason minority of the scientists accept that model and the majority reject it because even in science, just like in in religion, there is a majority view and minority view. Okay, so there are hypotheses which people can bring in their own opinion. The sci you know, scientists are not going to say we reject everything. Yes. So they will they will say okay, bring your hypothesis and then we will test it. Once they test it. And they pr uh, they have this uh, sorry they have disproven it. Then they reject it. But that's not to say in the future that these hypotheses might mature into a theory, correct? In the future they might. There is that possibility. You know, you know. There is the possibility. No, no. Here. Okay, hear me out. You have to give that. Sort yeah, yeah. Hear me out. Hear me out. Why do you think the scientists rejected it? Well, they rejected it now. No, no. But why? Why? Have you looked into that? Because I have. It is because of the second law of thermodynamics. You know what that is? It's called entropy. It's called entropy. You know what's entropy? Okay. So basically, every system, yes, you you will find energy. When energy becomes unusable, then it it is it's like you know like a top. When you were a kid, you played with tops, yes, and you spin it, and then it runs out of energy, and then it stops. Okay. They say that the it's it's entropy basically. Your your the energy becomes unusable at a certain level, and and then that's the reason you have. The system is not, like I said, uh, in the case of the top, not as effective as it was earlier. So what I'm saying is that because of this, then you cannot have this cyclic universes. But don't these laws break down in the quantum level? All these laws you're talking about in the quantum level, they can break down. You know what is quantum level? At a microscopic level. We are not talking about a microscopic level. The universe, it has a macro level. So you're talking about, again, different dimensions. Sorry. 
break down and No, it's just so because... Not, so, so that doesn't mean in the future, 100, 200 yeah. years from now, we can have a good model that, that supports an infinite. No. What you're talking about breaks... The, I'll tell you why. But, but I'm telling you why. I'm telling you why. You made a postulation. I'm telling you why it cannot be the case. Because this quantum level, what you're talking about, yes, maybe it is also possible that they don't understand it now. No, they don't understand it fully. They know a lot Exactly my point. So maybe in future they'll find the reason why these things are occurring from different places. Yes? Because right now what they say is that all this is happening in a quantum vacuum. And the quantum vacuum is not nothing. It is something which they don't understand it yet. So maybe there's an explanation in the future for it. But you cannot say that a thing, a thing as massive as the universe came from nothing. You cannot say that this big crunch and big, uh, uh, sorry, the cyclic. Yeah, so this infinite big bangs and big crunches. These are hypotheses. So these are basically opinions of people. By the way, you know, there are certain people who said that the universe was made in some alien uh, lab. And, and you know, this was published. It was published on Harvard, on, on, on the website of Harvard University. Because they would publish anything any scientist would say. But they wouldn't accept it as a theory. Because these are opinions and they'll accept anything. So they said there's this, uh, some scientists saw some big shape of this meteor in the shape of a cigar. And they thought that was actually the aliens coming into our universe. And they created all this, you know, like some nonsense. Well, like, made in a universe, alien universe. Sorry, alien kitchen. Sorry? Oh, you think alien? There's literally as much evidence of that than your What did I say? What is your understanding of God? You don't even have. You say, every time I ask you, you say, I don't know. At least I know that aliens didn't make us in a kitchen. Okay, and that's what I'm laughing at or smiling at. Unless you believe that. Well, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, you're, maybe you're a product of an alien kitchen. I don't know. I'm guessing not. Yeah. I don't know. Do you believe in aliens? I think there's probably, there's probably some sort of life somewhere. In the... Why do you believe that? Do you have any evidence for it? <coughs> Oh, he's got another argument. You no, because you never said that when I asked you about God. You never said probably there's a God. No, so but when I asked you about an alien, yeah, you said probably there's an alien. Is, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but that's what you could have told me instead of saying probably there's an alien. You see what I mean? You're giving, spe you're giving special, there's special pleading know, for anything except God. He means you don't know. He wants, he wants you to keep an open mind, basically. You know, there are some people that are saying this is a simulation. Yeah. Even a computer program. We were simulated by uh, yeah. another alien species. Now that may sound ridiculous, but it does have some basis. It's not completely insane. Actually, if you ask me, that is completely insane because those people are not in touch with their reality. No, you could you could make an argument that this is a computer simulation. We're what? Sim uh, then you're not in touch with your reality, my friend. A very advanced computer program created that just shows that you're not in touch with your reality. If that is the claim that they're making. I'm saying keep an open mind. No, but, but hold on. Keeping an open mind could be any ridiculous thing. I'm not saying accept it. Uh, I think, look, my God-given intellect will not allow me to accept any nonsense that comes from anyone. So if you are, wait, wait, if you want to believe that you're a product of an alien kitchen, or if you want to believe that you're you're, you're, you're some sort of a brain in a jar, or if you want to believe that you're in a computer simulated uh, environment. Accepting is one thing. Keeping an open mind and researching and looking into things is something that Yeah, my research, my research and my intellect tells me that being in touch with reality would actually ex exclude those kind of doubts you have. A computer simulation, a brain in a jar, a product of aliens. I mean, come on. Where does it end? Where do you draw the line about sanity then? But some people would say, use that that phrase in touch with reality about religious people. What people like you? No, I wouldn't. Well, it just shows. Look, it just shows. I would say if, I don't you know, certain look. There are certain people out there where their religious understanding is like believing believing that in aliens, for example. So if that is if that is their religion. Then I would say yes, they have lost touch with the with their reality. So you don't believe in aliens? No, I don't believe in aliens creating me. I mean, look, there's no, a possibility. You don't, no, hold on. So you don't believe in aliens? No, I wouldn't say that. I said there's probably aliens. I wouldn't completely say there's no aliens because right now I have nothing in my religion which says that know. there's no aliens. You don't know. No, I said about creation. Go on. We were talking about know. creation. You don't know. Go on, say, it. say what? Yeah, yeah, I don't know if they're aliens or not. Good. So, could we so what's that? Wait, wait. How is that different to me saying there's probably aliens? 
So could we no, you said that to me. I wish you said that about God. No, well, that probably there is a God. I wish you said that. Then we would be on the same level. You said you don't know about aliens. Right? Yeah, I don't. Could, could you hypothesize that maybe we, we've been genetically engineered by aliens? Like, why not? Look, you can, if you want to... No, no, hold on, hold on. Look, if you want, if you want to believe that... No, 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 no. I'm not saying believe it. Believe in it. I'm saying something you can entertain. Something you can sort of first, first and foremost, first and foremost, wait, wait, first and foremost, before you say that I'm, I'm genetically modified by the alien, I need to first, yeah, modified, engineered, semantics, yeah, I need to first believe in alien, right? Exactly, which means that I don't believe it, which means there's a proper, no, hold on, come on, hold on, if I say I don't know, it doesn't mean, sorry, it, uh, I said, wait, but no, I said probably there are aliens. These are the exact probably words I used. No, no, yes. So yeah. So if I don't know, that means first I need to know for certain before I start believing. I need to start before I start believing that they are. You know, first, first the aliens need to exist before I believe that they acted on anything. <laughs> you see what I mean? You know, human imagination. Human imagination is such. That you can you can claim anything, you can think of anything, you can dream of anything. It's also what made us evolve and develop. It's imagination. Well, I don't think I'm evolved. I think I was made no, like that. No, like I don't know about you. When scientists came, they said, I I don't think I've evolved. I think I'm a human from the very beginning, including my generations before me, including the first man Adam. If you guys came from chimpanzees or apes, I don't know about your ancestors, but my ancestors are definitely human. Galileo okay. said the uh, sun orbits around the earth. They thought he was insane. They thought he was, they was crazy until he was proven to be right yeah. over time. And? So it's okay and it's good to have an open mind, to research other things, no, but look. to entertain other things, but not believe. Honestly. Hear me out, hear me out. Muslims, alhamdulillah, had never problem being with open mind. Some of the earliest Muslims, they did experiments and... They discover things, you know. So Ibn Haytham. Ibn Haytham. Because what you're, because what you're saying is, is insane. It's our, it's, it's, why? Like I said, would you believe everything you hear? Okay. Then I wouldn't believe it either. That's what I said, my friend. What's the difference between you and me? Nothing. No, no. Open mind. Wait, wait, wait. Open mind means you believe it, right? No. Then what does it mean? It means you can. Read about it, research it. You don't necessarily have to believe. It. Okay. I can read the Bible. I can read science, science fiction books. I can read a lot. Of so, so, subject, yeah. Just to see. Okay. So, by you seeing it, what does that mean? What does it mean? For you seeing, for you reading fiction, um, watching fiction, what does it mean? It just means you entertain yourself with these things. But then, the question still remains. Wait, wait. The the question the question still remains. By seeing this fiction and by watching fiction, sorry, by reading fiction and watching fiction, what does it mean? It just means you enjoy fiction, right? But, but how does that relate to the reality? That was my question. All I'm saying is that if you start mixing fiction with reality, then I think that, that brings in the question about your sanity as well. When you write fiction, you're in the real world. It's derived from reality. Why do you call it fiction then? Like why do you art, call it fiction then? Art, arts, literature, yeah. these are all fiction, but they're really no, But why do you, why, why does the library have a special section for fiction? Why? It's fiction, but it's derived. Okay, and what is the meaning of fiction? Not, no, no, not real. Thank you, I rest my case. That's what I've been telling him. That this is what differentiates reality from fiction. And the reason you still call it fiction is because we haven't actually um, we haven't categorized it as reality because it's not reality. And the reason, you know what, there wouldn't be any difference between people who are sane and insane if you're going to keep such an open mind to accept all unreality. You see what I mean? You, the reason the reason that psychologists have diagnosed them as being insane and they put them in an asylum is because they have lost touch. Not because the, uh, the, the doctors are saying, oh my goodness, the guy's got an open mind. <laughs> Let's, let's come on, guys, let's come down back to Earth. Forget about the aliens, forget about the fiction, the reality. No, you guys started with the aliens. I gave you, I gave you the example of what uh, people will publish. Even Harvard University on their website will publish um, any professor who says that he will believe in some cigar-shaped meteor, which is actually one of the spaceships of the aliens. 
who manufactured us humankind in their in their lab or so in the lab or in the kitchen or wherever. No, no, they, this professor, don't put words in my body, you have a habit of doing that. No, I'm not putting words, I'm saying some people... Okay, I don't that. believe it, I've told you exactly. categorically, if they believe it, then they, like I said, they, are, they, don't, they have lost touch with reality. Because when you start bringing fiction into your real world, and start believing that, then there is where the insanity becomes insanity. Okay, define fictitious. Because I wouldn't call miracles and fiction the same. Miracle is something that science cannot prove or science cannot explain. A miraculous phenomenon. In fact, there are many miraculous phenomena that happen in the universe all the time. And that's the reason they call it a phenomenon which they cannot explain. To me, that is what a miracle is. But if something is a fiction, then it is not even real. That alone, you cannot explain it. Are you with me? No. A miracle is something, by definition, which science cannot explain, which we in our naturalistic world cannot explain. Because if you could explain it, then it wouldn't be a miracle. And that's why you have to distinguish between a fiction and miracle. One, is, one can happen in real life, in real world, but you can't explain it. Fiction is not even real. Again? The universe is a miracle. I think, I think you're a miracle. Yeah. Can anyone create you? Physical process. There's a, there's what is the physical process for the universe to come into existence? Saying, you can't. Something that can't be explained. So explain okay, explain to me how the first cell came into being. No, I've asked you. What? I've asked you to describe a miracle that's happened. I just told you yourself. No, it's not a miracle because there's a, there's a, there's a Okay, let me break it down to the simplest form. Origin of life? Yeah. Origin? So, origin of life, which is abiogenesis, if you have studied that, yeah. you yeah, you realize that the first cell, they cannot explain how it came into being. Now, and to me, to me, that is a miracle itself. A miracle now. You're saying there's miracle yeah. Now. So, the, so cells, do cells exist? No, 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 that's the, uh, the abiogenesis, the first experiment, the Miller-Urey experiment, yeah. says that the origin of life were basic amino acids. Yeah. And they were caused by having uh, sunlight and you need uh, cosmic soup. It existed within a cosmic soup, lighting. And then that's where the first... You believe that? That's where the first amino acids were. No, no, but do you actually believe that? It's a scientific experiment. I know, I know it's an experiment, but did they actually produce something from nothing? They, they, no, it's not from nothing. It's from a cosmic soup. It's from a soup. It's basically a soup. Chemical processes, lightning, a certain atmosphere. You can recreate it in a lab yeah. and you can produce amino acids. That's all you can do. And they say that Amino acids doesn't explain. Okay. But they say that's the basic, basic yeah. unit of Many people said that these things came from space as well. Yeah? So there are different theories about this. But the, the, the point still remains. You know, if you look at the simplest cell, yes, any cell. Now some cells are very complex. I know, I know. I know, but it's still a single cell. Amino acids are the first. In fact, even, that's the first yeah, even amino acids are complex. They're not something which is simple. And then you can produce them in a lab. Uh, I don't think so. No. Yeah. So it's not from nothing. It's from something. Yeah. So maybe there. Are, so these processes which you talk about are still taking place in a in a, uh, in a lab which is controlled experiment, right? But when we when we look at okay, hear me out. When we look at the early Earth, it wasn't a com it wasn't a controlled lab. Okay. So we cannot. This is false equivalence. If you think a controlled lab experiment is the same as a natural process in the early stages of the Earth, then it's not the same, my friend. They, they recreated the early, pro, the early state of the Earth. They have never seen the early process, have they? They know what it was. How, how did they know? You need water, first of all. You need certain chemical processes to take place, and you can produce amino acids. Yeah, in a controlled lab environment. Yeah. I keep telling you this. Which is, a which is not no 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 which is not a replication that's, that's of the early earth i'm sorry to say this okay, a control a control experiment okay, hold on a control experiment is not the same as how the early earth was there's no way okay how do i know because when you when i say control it means what you do is you you bring certain elements in a control lab that means you must have the right temperature the right uh, I don't know, elements that you're using, the raw materials, everything is already there. How did they know that was the case back then? Ah, by chance. You see what I mean? 
look, my friend, it doesn't matter how you look at it. The point is, by the way, I like the way you said the cell is a complex thing. Yes, it is. The, the cell is so complex that it has its own, uh, what do you say, um, its, its own generator, like the mitochondria, yes, which gives us energy. It's, it's all inbuilt into this single cell. You don't think that's a miracle to come about by itself, by chance, like you said? There you go. If it came by chance, that's a miracle to me. <laughs> you have to study abiogenesis, right? Abiogenesis experiments say that the first side, the first building blocks of life were amino acids. Yeah, and, and I, then over time, they evolved into cells. Millions of years. No, but look, this is that's, jumping. That, that's honestly, this is a leap of faith to say that amino acids in a controlled environment automatically led to first cell. You know, it's, it's too much. There's a there's a lot of things which just come about by chance. It is, it is basically, you know, it is, it is more complex than me saying that uh, a jet come about by itself from the junkyard. It is more complex than that. You see what I mean? So anyone who tells me that this leaps of faith by scientists, that is how, you know, they are just trying to explain things. One thing I've noticed about scientists is that they, will, they are willing to accept everything except God. Except God. And that's the reason even scientists who bring, who bring into the equation God, they are actually rejected from their fields at universities. They will be actually, you know, just chucked out. Because this is, this is a prejudice they have against, the, they have a prejudice against people who believe in God. This is quite natural in, in all major universities. No, no, they, they already have made up their mind that if we explain anything, it has to be from the naturalistic world. It has to be from a naturalistic process. Yes? And this is what they have indoctrined, yes, people like this gentleman and other atheists and other agnostic in this world today. Because what they do is they have, they have, they have told them there is no way that God could have done this, so you need to explain it through the natural process, otherwise you are fired from the university. You cannot be a professor, you cannot be on the board, you cannot be anything. And this, to me, this, this is not open-mindedness. Okay? The, the open-mindedness that they seek from us, they don't give this opportunity to the people who believe in God. They don't, unfortunately. At least the religious people, you know, people who believe in religion, they have no problem with science. As long as the science doesn't impose on them that the only way is the natural process and you cannot have God in the equation. That's all. So who has, who has more open mind? The religious people or the scientists? I think it's the religious people. No, no, every university, every top university, yes, they don't accept you unless and until you said, oh, no, I can explain this through natural processes. Do you know the definition of Imam? <laughs> you know what he just asked me? Would I accept an Imam who doesn't believe in God? He doesn't know the definition of Imam. Because an Imam, by definition, is someone who's knowledgeable about God and who believes in God. Okay, so you wouldn't accept someone in... What, a, what's the definition of a scientist? In your organization. No, no, now you tell me what's the definition of a scientist. I believe in Islam. Yeah. And the scientists in their organization yeah. don't accept people, so what's wrong with that? No, no, what is the definition of a scientist? Okay, is, does the definition include don't believe in God? Thank you. I'll rest my case. There you go. Some of the best scientists like Newton, yes, like uh, Gregor Mendel, yes, like Ibn Haytham, all these people who believed in God, yes, they were scientists and beautiful. I mean, they, they, uh, <laughs> their discoveries, their, uh, what do you say, their postulations, they had, they had these credentials of a scientist and a believer in God. So if you're going to tell me a scientist's definition includes don't believe in God, I don't think that's a real scientist. Then. It just shows you're a close-minded, prejudiced person. That's all you are. So there you go. Anyway, thanks for your time, guys. I think we have uh, talked a lot. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Don't forget to subscribe to Dawah Wise, Mansoor and Hashim's channels.